Now this question says, uh, we have a wheel of radius R, so there is a wheel, this wheel, and the radius of the wheel is R, so R is the radius, and this contains a charge capital Q uniformly distributed. So over the rim, we have a charge capital Q, so charge Q, this is over the rim, and this is uniformly distributed, another important point, uniform. So this is a uniform distribution of charge. Locating. Now this says, this wheel is free to rotate about a light horizontal rod. So this is a light rod, almost mass is zero and horizontal. So the rod is light. So I can write this is a light horizontal rod. So this is a horizontal rod. Now the question says, the rod is suspended by light inextensible string. So we have two a string, this side one a string, this side another a string. So this rod is basically suspended by these two a strings. Now there is a magnetic field B that exists in this region. And this is applied as shown in the figure. So this is perpendicular to the rod. So magnetic field magnitude is B. The initial tension in the strings is T0. So there is a tension T0. There is a tension T0. And let us assume the mass of this rim is m. So now I can write equation of equilibrium. So you will have T0 plus T0 and the force acting in the downward direction is mz. So if you follow these two things, I will have 2T0 is equal to mz. So this means mz by 2 is equal to T0. So I know the initial tension T0. Now if the breaking the string breaking the strength of the string is 3 T naught by so this means any of the string can have maximum tension that is 3 T naught by 2 so maximum permissible tension is 3 T naught by 2 so let us call this a T breaking breaking tension that is equals to we will have 3 T naught by 2 So the question says find the maximum angular velocity omega naught with which wheel can rotate. So now this wheel is rotating. So omega naught is the velocity. So now if this omega naught is the velocity, what will happen? So this ring has a charge. So this means if this wheel is rotating, this means charge is moving. This means there is a current in this loop. There is a current in this rim. So what is the current? So let us first find. So due to movement, there is a current in the rim. So what is the current? So total charge flow that is Q. What is the time to move one circle? So that is 2 pi by omega. Time is 2 pi by omega naught in this case you have. So what is current Q by T? So current you will have that is Q divided by T that is 2 pi by omega naught. So you can write this is Q omega naught divided by 2 pi. So this is the current you have in the ring. Now due to this current you will have a torque over this ring. You see this current, now if I want to find I torque, so I need I into A, I into A into, so torque is equal to mu cross B. So let us apply this formula. So if I find torque, so this is nothing but mu cross B. Now important point is, to find out the direction of mu, so mu is area into i into b, are you getting or not? And we have to write area vector and v vector. So what is my area vector? You see, if I follow the right handed thumb rule, this is the direction of current, so this is the, uh, the curling goes in the direction of current, so this thumb will tell you something about the direction of area vector, are you getting or not? So the area vector is this side. So let us call this axis as my x-axis and this axis is my y-axis then this becomes my z-axis. So area vector is along x-axis. So area vector is along the i-direction. So now I can write this is area vector i and the magnitude of b is b and area vector is along the i-direction and b is along the z-direction so this is i cross z. So if you have I cross A that is K basically, so area 
into a magnitude of current into b into i plus j that is k are you getting so this is the torque and this torque is along the k direction so this is the torque that is along the k direction this means if you follow the thumb rule you have to have something something like this are you getting or not then you will have something that will come outside are you getting so you see what is happening if you see this whole thing so this is your rod and there is a ring so this is your ring and due to this ring so this ring let me uh, rub this one slightly so that things becomes easy so this is my ring are getting and over this stream torque is along this direction so torque is along the z direction so this is the direction of torque so you see uh, this is basically in this direction so see if i transfer this torque to a this point so i can make a free body diagram of something of this kind of thing so there are forces there is a string so let us call at this point tension in this string is t1 and tension in this string is t2 so you will have tension at this point is t1 so tension at this point is t1 and tension at this point is t2 and now i can transfer this torque at this point because this torque so this is the middle point and there is a torque and the value of this torque now if i write and there is a force that is acting in the downward direction that is mz so we will have a mz force acting in the downward direction now if i write a equilibria of a torque and forces so if i write force equilibria i will have t1 plus t2 and this is equals to mz this is one equation now the second equation i will have if i write torque so this is the torque of Okay, let us take torque about this point. So this point about torque, total torque. If I take this direction as a positive direction, so about this point, total torque. So tau is one torque, and now this will also have a torque in this direction. So tau plus t2 into d by 2. So this distance, total distance, is given in the problem. So this distance is d. So that is given to you. So this distance is d. So this distance is d by 2, and minus t1 into d by 2 this has to be zero are you getting or not so this is the maximum we will have now from here we can now you see which tension will be major tension this or this t1 will be or t2 because you see this torque has a tendency to pull this rope this side and to push this rope this side so this rope has a tendency to go up and this rope has a tendency to go down so this means this rope is more stressed so now i can say according to my figure t1 is greater than t2 so t1 will break fast so that this rope that the right hand right side rope will rope i will break fast so let us calculate t1 so eliminate t2 so t2 is nothing but mz minus t1 so t2 is mz minus t1 so tau plus mz minus t1 and into d by 2 Minus t1 dy2. This is equals to zero. And now tau plus mz into dy2. And this is t1 dy2, t1 dy2. So this becomes simply t1 into d. So maximum breaking the strain that is allowable, that is given to you, that is 3t not by 2. So maximum allowable tension is 3t not by 2. So if I plug this value here, so this is maximum is 3t not by 2 into d. and tau we have already calculated so this tau is what so tau is a i b k are you getting so i need only magnitude so a i b and what is i so we can plot the value a i b so this is a i b so this is i will have a i b plus m z into d by 2 now what is the value of i at what is the area area is nothing but pi r square and current is total charge is q and time required to flow is 2 pi by omega so this is current n to b is equals to this becomes 3t not by 2d minus mz d by 2 
Now if you see the first part, we have also said mg is equal to t0 is equal to mg by 2. So if I plug that value, so mg is equal to 2t0. So I will have mg is equal to 2t0. So 3t0 by 2 into d minus 2t0 d by 2. So this comes out to be, I can write again. So this is 3t0 by 2 minus t0. So this is uh, t0 into d by 2. So this is t0 into d by 2. So I will have here, so pi goes. So I will have bq omega r square by 2 is equal to t0 into d by 2. So 2 goes. So what is the maximum value of omega? That is t0 d bq r square.